Thank you very much, and good morning, everyone. Um, archaeology has always been a profoundly visual discipline, as it frequently uses pictures, drawings, illustrations, art impressions, and more recently, 3D models. However, while the latter are nowadays well established in archaeology, fundamental issues with their application still remain problematic as they are often uncritically adopted without clear questions and aims. Very little is known about how people engage and interact with this specific form or representation of the past. It doesn't matter, in fact, if they remain within the academia or they are disseminated among a broader public. 3D models will be exploited by others according to purposes and modalities that are probably different from those of their creators. A proper evaluation framework is crucial to understand what kind of relationship occurs between a 3D model and its users, as well as the degree of appreciation and knowledge achieved by different audiences. This research primarily argues that the application of 3D interactive models in archaeology, in both academic and public dissemination domains, uh, needs to be properly evaluated to understand how it affects people's engagement with and perceptions of past cultures. Using the case study of the Middle Bronze Age settlement at Rimilon in Toporaco, this research will, will consider each step of a multi-stage process, from the creation of interactive 3D models, to the representation to varying audiences in a range of settings, to the evaluation of their effectiveness and the subsequent improvement using users' feedback. The methodology proposed for this research aims to assess how people perceive the digital visualizations and to what extent 3D models can broaden the understanding of an archaeological site to groups of both specialists and non-specialists unfamiliar with the specific case studies context. It is defined by different stages along the following workflow. 1. 3D modeling. Create an interactive 3D model that shows the site in its current state and the interpretive visualization of the settlement. 2. Evaluation. Present the 3D visualization to different user groups and use both qualitative and quantitative approaches, so interviews, focus groups and questionnaires, to collect their feedback. 3. Implementation and second evaluation. Use the audience feedback to improve the 3D model comprehensibility and establish an effective workflow that can be potentially applied to other case studies. Then conduct a further iteration of the evaluation process. A brief con description of the Middle Bronze Age settlement at Rimilan in Toporaco is given before presenting the methodological approach in detail. The site is located in the southern coast of Cyprus in the Limassol district. It has been investigated um, since 2008 by the Italian Archaeological Expedition, a project of the University of Turin in collaboration with the Department of Antiquities of Cyprus. Uh, the settlement appears to have occupied two main areas of different function located on sloping limestone terraces. A productive area, area A, is located on the, on the top of the hill, while the first lower terrace is occupied by a residential area, area B. A cluster of tombs, area E, extending south, um, extending south of the productive and residential areas, is contemporary with the settlement. The built space is characterized by an organized layout of rock-cut spaces. Uh, in fact, both areas A and B show an alternation of roofed spaces and open ones. For my research project, I decided to focus the 3D modeling work on the visualization of the two occupation phases of the productive area, since it is so far the more intensively excavated. It is organized into 12 units, we have five open working spaces characteri characterized by a presence of rock cut basins of different shape and size, and seven big roofed units similar in their structural organization but different in their internal spatial arrangement. Residual artifact assemblages together with installations and paleobotanical data suggest that the complex could possibly be identified as a workshop for the production of textiles in which activities including spinning, weaving and dyeing were carried out. The first phase of my research has been focused on create the 3D model that shows the productive area in its current state and the interpretive visualization of its both phases of occupation. Then provide the 3D model with interactive hotspots that give information about the site. The modeling work has been carried out as a participatory process 
So various experts have been involved in the creation of the model, providing feedback according to their field of expertise. That's working. <laughs> Once completed the modeling work, the 3D model has been imported in Unity to create an interactive user interface, providing information about material evidences, structures, building materials and techniques, as well as the interpretation process that lies behind this reconstruction. The interactive model built with Unity presents a basic mouse-based navigation which allows users to navigate around the model and click on luminous hotspots to retrieve information. A further level of immersivity is provided by avatars, which allow a first-person navigation and provide a scale for structures and the built environment overall. So, once the 3D model was completed with the, the hypothetical reconstruction of the site and the interactive user interface and textual information, I move forward to the following stage of this research. The application of the evaluation framework to different user groups, composed of specialists and non-specialists, to gather data about their engagement and perception of the digital model. Firstly, I interviewed experts working at Cerimi, such as archaeologists, anthropologists and micromorphology experts to exploit their knowledge of the specific research context and detect the potential issues. I also wanted to observe how such experts use and perceive the 3D model and compare their responses to those of other users unfamiliar with the case study's particular context. All participants were asked to interact with the 3D model while responding to nine open-ended questions. So qualitative data about the experience have been gathered using seven interviews and one focus group. Then I conducted one survey at the University of York Archaeology Department, recruiting participants among staff, postgraduate research students and students. And I'm also currently circulating an online survey amongst both professional and lay users. All participants are asked to interact with the 3D model and fill out a questionnaire with 25 open-ended and close-ended questions. So far, I've collected 49 questionnaires from three main user groups, experts, non-experts and students. Here, I will present the preliminary results of this survey. To date, these results show interesting responses here classified into four main categories comprehensibility, immersivity, usability and engagement. So in terms of comprehensibility, all groups show general uh, clear agreement on the help of the proposed model for a better overall understanding of the site. In particular, non-expert users 73% strongly agree, and students, 63% agree. Expert users' response is also positive, but more dispersed. Regarding immersivity, all groups show a common clear degree of agreement, especially non-expert users, 73% strongly agree, and students, 50% strongly agree. Expert users' response is also positive, but more dispersed. Users' appreciation of the possibility to visualize the model through a first-person point of view is also reflected in several comments in response to the open-ended questions 22 to 25, aimed to collect the users' feedback on what they remembered, liked or disliked about the experience. So interesting first-person perspective of the site. And another expert uh, cited this feature among those they liked the most of the experience. So I really loved being able, being able to stand in the room and get a better sense of scale and leave the space. However, users also express the need to be able uh, to move around the model while maintaining this kind of perspective uh, as they were walking to the site. Two expert users, for example, provided the following comment on what they didn't like about the experience. Uh, lacking of a, of, um, of a sense of first person experience and I would like to be able to move as an avatar around the whole site. So these preliminary results seem to confirm the fact that users demand a higher level of immersivity and possibly the presence of moving avatars. In terms of usability, both non-experts, 64% agree, and students, 50% agree, show general positive agreement on the usability on the interface. Uh, expert user response instead is less positive and more dispersed. 
So regarding the model and the user interface, some topics emerged as negatively affecting the experience. It is possible to group these topics into three macro categories. The lack of a surrounding landscape, as pointed out by this non-expert user comment, I wanted more scope and surrounding view. Uh, the need for um, a more organic and seamless way to incorporate the text description in the user interface, as stated by this expert user. Also codifying some of the text to be visual or presented as a part of the model rather than disjointed, I think will be a little more cohesive. And the vocabulary used for text descriptions, which was considered sometimes too technical and probably non suitable for an expert audience. audience. As emerges from these comments on what they didn't like about the experience made by a student, more user friendly summaries could have been included, and a non expert user. The lack of an explanation of the keywords for those who are not archaeologists. Concerning engagement, all groups show a general positive response to the overall experience, which was perceived um, as engaging, especially among, amongst non expert users. 55% were engaging, and students, 56% were engaging. Less positive and more dispersed is expert users' response. Uh, this feeling is also reflected in some of the users' comments. Uh, for example, interesting and enjoyable, inspiring for somebody who wishes to one day to do this themselves, uh, fascinating and a great start, uh, uh, very good 3D model with clear, de clear descriptions, was easy to use and very engaging. In regard of engagement, it is also worth mentioning that some users reported the feeling of being present. One non-expert user, for example, left the following comment on what they remembered about the experience. So the sense of navigation of the spaces, the feeling of getting into the site, the imagination of being there during the Bronze Age. And the same feeling was also reported by one of the expert users. Uh, the sense of being in the rooms, the placement of objects in relation to me. Conversely, one non-expert user report the opposite feeling in relation to what they didn't like about the experience, so I did not have a sense of presence. These preliminary results of my study highlighted several promising topics, such as the use of avatars or the role of immersion and interactivity in enhancing users' experience. This topic will be then further investigated by follow-up interviews with survey participants and focus groups. Once terminated the, the data collection, the next steps will be use triangulation to compare um, data coming from both quantitative and qualitative approaches uh, in order to obtain a comprehensive image of the effectiveness of the 2D model and its impact upon different range of audiences. Uh, the implementation of the model to improve its comprehensibility and efficacy, and then a further iteration of the evaluation process. To conclude, it's important to consider the preliminary results here discussed uh, just as a step towards a better understanding of how interactive 3D models in archaeology are not only used but perceived by a diverse range of audiences and to what extent they produce excitement and emotional response, fostering desire for knowledge about or interaction with past cultures. Uh, so if you want to work to know more about the um, project, or more importantly, if you want to take part in <laughs> my survey, in the next slide you will find my contact details and my website, and I'd be more than happy to receive your feedback. Thank you.